happy Hunger Games, and may the odds be ever in your favor. A, B, N. It's headphones steel. What's up guys, Headphones Neil here, back with another film review, and in this case it's going to be the four film franchise for The Hunger Games. So I finally decided I would watch through all of the films to see how they've hold up. Um, I think I saw the first one, in, or I saw most of the first one, and then for some reason I stopped watching either because it wasn't interesting enough or it didn't feel like it was going very far. And I think I saw bits and pieces of the third one because there were scenes that I remember, or I just remember the promo art with um, Natalie Dormer because when her character showed up, it was interesting. So for whatever reason, I didn't see all four films um, either when they first released in theaters or after the fact. So to get it off my bucket list, I watched all four films and decided to see how I think they hold up to see kind of what kind of films they are, what they're all about, see if they actually hold up in what my thought, my memory and ideas of it are as far as a post, semi-post-apocalyptic world where the, in this case, is kind of the, from the tale of, um, you know, the hunting man, man is the ultimate sport. So in this case, we have a society where there was rebellion in a society, and in order to avoid that, they the capital of a of a the a country called Pan Am holds what they call the Hunger Games, and the various districts offer up tribute in order to fight to the death and get extra resources. So, I guess it's a weird way to avoid an uprising. Which to me, when I was watching it, it kind of feels like a weird way to avoid an uprising because. Ultimately, when you have 12 districts and one of them has to win and you have to kill other people to get the extra resources, um, ultimately it's going to, it feels like it would ultimately lead to a rebellion anyways because, um, for example, in this case there are some districts who win a lot more than others, they get extra resources, there's others that are more oppressed than others, so ultimately they're going to rise up and be tired of the life that they lead. And also, in this case, there's an extra layer of the districts having an underground movement as far as the rebellion and deciding on the right time to strike. So, regardless of how this is set up, it feels it set the society up for a rebellion anyway. So it was all for naught, and offering up tributes is a really lousy and crappy way of um, trying to squash the rebellion. So overall, I think they did a pretty good job of presenting that. Um, so while, and so the thing that's kind of an upside and downside is that while um, the main protagonist, protagonist of the films, Katniss Everdeen, is from District 12 and the focus is going to be on her and her story, it feels like they could have leveled out some of the other districts a little bit better. So you have the tributes in the Hunger Games presented as far as the individual characters, but I kind of wanted to see more in the first two films as far as leveling or providing more information of what all the various districts are good at so we know that district 12 is good at coal but it would have been nice for more presentation of the other districts and what they do so if they were presented i couldn't tell you even after just watching the films what the other um districts do but somehow it all feeds into the capital to keep the country going so i kind of wanted to see that but Overall, I want to say that I was good, and I liked that the idea that prior winners are not necessarily, or they're not sent back to the Hunger Games to continue winning, kind of like the winner of a basket one-on-one -on -one basketball game or two-on-two -two basketball game has to keep playing until they lose. The winners of a particular year's Hunger Games become mentors for the next year's and for, uh, future year's tributes. So. Kind of, they use the t tips and tricks and things they learned from when they were a uh, victor, and they share that with the other people from their district. So, kind of give them more information and a ed or an edge or a ha uh, ha um, a hand up as far as um, 
what they could do to survive and kind of what to expect when they go in against the other districts. Um, so other than that, there were there's a lot of people in these films that I didn't know were in them to begin with. So um, the two that of course are known are um, um, Jennifer Lawrence as Katniss Everdeen, and then Woody Harrelson as um, Hamish, her the um, mentor for District 12. And then you have, for example, uh, Jeffrey Wright, who stars in Westworld in a kind of similar role where he's the tech, the techie, the guy who understands a lot of the technology and hacker business of the films. So it's kind of a similar role as what we see him in in Westworld. So I kind of liked him here. We have Philip Seymour Hoffman as a game maker, so if you think of his role in, I forget which James Bond film he was in with Daniel Craig, but kind of a role, less of that personality in the Bond role, but using some of the similar traits and characteristics in The Hunger Games as far as the game maker. Um, you have the guy who plays President Snow who is in a lot of westerns, and then you have um, Gwendolyn Christie who's uh, Phasma. Um, in Star Wars, so I kind of wanted a bigger role and it goes back to that whole idea that I kind of wanted more as far as what the districts do. So for example, they did a good job as far as District 13 being a good military district, so I kind of wanted more as far as the other 11 districts. Um, and then in general, and then of course the one thing that was totally random for me was Colonel Smith, the original right hand to um, President Snow, who's the Nazi colonel in um, The Man in the High Castle. So I kind of liked his role here. And in general, it's, it feels like a more harsh punishment than what he got in The Man in the High Castle. So, but you can see why he plays both roles well. So I kind of wanted an expanded role for him as far as um, his role as maybe head of the peacekeepers in the various films and having more of what he does. So for me, the films and what the content that they provided was not necessarily bad, but it felt like it was kind of unevenly placed. So while the second movie, Catching Fire, was good as far as sending the team, the uh, victors from prior Hunger Games back into um, the the thingy to do to partake in the Hunger Games, I kind of wanted also more outside of that as far as more behind the scenes stuff is what they're up to. So um, in general, that would have made it better. Just more progression in addition to um, changing up the rules of the Hunger Game by the Capitol, having more backstory in the second film um, than we got, or even bringing some of the stories from the third and fourth films, like what we saw, what they did with uh, PETA in, I think, the third film, I want to say, to put it in the second film and um, progress that a little bit more. So um, overall, I want to say that the films, like I said, if I was to recommend the film franchise, I would say that I give them about a B plus to an A minus, so right around the 88 to 92 percent. Overall, they were good. The stories were good. The acting was good by everybody. The progression of the story was good. Um, the twist at the end, as far as um, S Snow, not necessarily Snow, but the lady who's the leader of the resistance, um, being the actual bad guy, and then. Cadmus taking her out, but then the mob taking out Snow to overthrow the government. So all in all, everything generally worked out well, but for me, the second film felt like a lull in the franchise and then picked up again in the third and fourth films. Um, and then I kind of, as a bit of a side note, I kind of wanted the final film to be called something different. Um, so. I guess they split up some of the stories to make it Mockingjay Part 1 and 2, but I kind of would have wanted them to continue with the naming scheme, so while the third one is Mockingjay to show the rise of Katniss, I wanted I would probably want the last one to be called like Uprising or New Dawn or um, 
the girl on fire or putting out the fire something like that rather than just mocking Jay part one and two because the story is while it is a continuation and progression of what we're seeing it doesn't a lot of the story shows up in the second and third film so the fourth one being called mocking Jay part two doesn't really work as well so like i said overall the story was good um there's very little that i didn't think was bad in the films aside from the unevenness of it so if you haven't seen the films, then definitely give them a watch. They're a pretty good film franchise, and it's good to see kind of how Jennifer Lawrence has her early start in these films, and um, she kind of carries that over pretty well as she plays um, Mystique in the X-Men franchise, um, the new franchises at least. So overall, an interesting film to watch, and it might take another watching or reading the novels to pick up on some of the stuff that... I missed in watching the films. So that's all there is for this particular review. So if you have any questions, comments, feedbacks, corrections, things I missed or anything like that, you can find me on Twitter at PatelN01. The website is headphonesneal.reviews for past episodes, subscription links, supporting the show, and all of that good stuff. But that is all for this particular review. Thanks for tuning in, and until next time.